Hello, my fellow Americans. Thanks for joining me again. If you're new here, I post every Thursday at 4 p.m. Just different things I like to talk about and things I see going on in the world. Since, or if you are rejoining me, thanks for joining me for this little conversation we're going to have. And uh, we're going to talk about money today, guys. <music> So the reason why I want to talk money again, this is not the first time I've talked money on this channel, is because governments are trying to change the way we use it and they're trying to force it in different ways. Okay. Uh, in Christianity, our concept of money is fluid. All right. Money is a tool. It uh, comes and goes. We use it for different things. Sometimes um, you have a lot. Sometimes you don't have much at all. Sometimes you're to use money to help others, to teach people certain concepts, such as reliance on God. Uh, it's always a tool for the future because you're supposed to have an inheritance for your children and your children's children. Like you are supposed to be super future thinking with that sort of thing. Um, so for us, you need a physical way to do this. Okay. This, this is not money. Um, needs to be physical. It's the best way to teach. It's the best way to pass it down. It's the best way to do anything in for it to remain fluid. Okay. Um, <clears throat> governments want to restrict the way I use this tool. So I'm not okay with that. I don't want it to be restricted. I don't want it to be something where, you know, I have to report how much I've used, where I used it, who I gave it to, etc. <clears throat> why I gave it to them. I don't think it's the government's business, the government's place to do that. Now, they always, the governments, always use the reason behind why they want to restrict money to because bad people do bad things with it. They counterfeit it, they do, etc. If a bad person is doing something bad with it, lock them up for the bad thing that they did. Don't restrict me who is, who is obeying the law from doing, excuse me, what I would like to do with it. Okay. And what started me down this path is this article right here. Why governments want to eliminate cash. If you ever want to know anything about money or investing, Investopedia is a really good resource for you. If you don't know anything, you can learn a lot and they have really short articles like this that just explain it very simply. Okay, so I'm going to read this real quick. <clears throat> okay. In 2016, the European Central Bank announced that it would stop minting $500 notes. So this, of course, is not a new thing that they're doing. When I was growing up, they wanted to stop making $50 bills and $100 bills. I even saw one article stating that eventually they'd like to get rid of the $20 bill. So they say in a move that says it's meant to curb fraud and money laundering. Again, bad things do bad. Bad people do bad things with money. The $500 euro note is the second largest denomination currently across the common euro currency zone. So some people in you know, overseas use the Euro. Some people have their own money. <clears throat> While the stated purpose was to stop financial crime, others have speculated that this move was part of a recent war on cash, essentially with the government trying to get rid of cash and eliminate money from the economy in a race to the bottom to weaken currencies in order to stimulate flagging economies around the globe. We may ultimately see a complete elimination of paper cash in favor of electronic money, not to be confused with digital currencies such as Bitcoin, but rather fiat currencies stored as entries in bank accounts. <clears throat> so you would have to have a bank, okay, number one, in order for you to spend the money that you make. That's one thing. Uh, the second thing that would change is that you could no longer just go like, think of all the things you use cash for flea markets, um, on the side, uh, what is this called? A garage sales, uh, just, you know, you want to loan a guy five bucks, right? 
You just take five bucks out of your wallet and you give it to them. It's done. Just think of all the uh, small businesses that go out to all of these like fairs and things like this. Uh, a lot of times it costs them money. It will, it, sorry, just think about the small businesses that go out to these fairs, go out to all these things that these um, smaller or even medium sized uh, counties and cities put on um, or festival or whatever. And you go out there and cash, cash is freely flowing everywhere. If you get rid of that, it's going to not only cost you more to do that, because you have to go through a digital center for it to do it. It may just go away completely or it may get smaller. All right. So this going to wholly digital, only digital is actually bad. It's not very good at all. All right. So at the time of ECB's announcement, the number of 500 euro bills in circulation represented over 300 billion or nearly one third of all the euro denominated cash outstanding. So basically there is $300 billion freely flowing out in the economy or being held by people. And they don't want that. They want it to be much more restrictive. They want to know where everything is at all times. They want to know what you're spending it on and why they want to know like, and they want to be able to stop you from doing that, which is where all of this, when it comes to um, stopping financial crime, they will, th what we have seen in the past is that governments make laws just um, vague enough so that it can apply to just about anything. Okay. So I don't trust them to do the right thing. I've seen more often than not that they do not do the right thing. Holding on to physical cash is exactly what negative interest rates, as implemented by the ECB and elsewhere, is meant to disincentivize because it's relatively easy to hoard cash using 500 notes. Eliminating them would benefit the central bank by making it increasingly difficult to avoid the negative interest rate policy mandate. Alternatives to hoarding paper and money such as physical assets such as gold are much more cumbersome and costly to store and transfer. So as far as I understand, a negative interest rate is where if you go to deposit your money, they will give you or they will charge you like a 1% rate on that. So if you take $100 in and you deposit it, 1% of that is a dollar. You now have $99. This takes the value of your $100 down. You think about it, if you do a thousand, now you'll only have $990. You see how that could really snowball if you have a lot of money and it could really be bad for you even if you don't have a lot of money because you need that one percent to do what you're doing whatever it is just living right analysts at bank of america have also just suggested that eliminating high denomination banknotes can effectively weaken a currency in global foreign exchange markets without a high value euro bill people who want to hold cash rather than spend it will trade in their euros for higher denominations in other currencies like the thousand note Swiss franc or the hundred dollar bills. If this analyst, if this analysis is correct, scrapping high denomination notes would also serve the ECB's motives of indirectly weakening the currency so as to boost exports and spur economic growth. You don't spur economic growth by weakening your currency. That creates what we're going through right now. One of the reasons that we are going through this um, it, this inflation and this bear market and everything that we're going through is because the value of the dollar has gone down over time. And so they're, they're making it worse thinking it's going to stimulate the economy, but it never does. It never works that way. So I don't know why they think it's gonna work now. <clears throat> Uh, paper money also makes it easy for people to withdraw large sums of money from their banks, which can be a cause of bank runs in a fractional reserve banking system and was a big problem during the 2008 financial crisis. If banks have to pay negative interest rates persistently to the central banks, they will ultimately have to pass this cost on to their customers. If a bank charges you a negative 1% interest on your deposits, you're much more likely to withdraw your money in the form of cash, making it harder to affect those large withdrawals will help stabilize the financial sector in such a case. 
So what they're saying is if they only charge the 1% on larger amounts of money, then <clears throat> people are, are going to be less likely to withdraw that money. So the money stays there and the bank is stable. So this, this is not really about making bad, making it hard for bad guys. This is about governments trying to control the banking system and making it what they would call stable. And what that always does, always, when the, when the government comes in and says, well, this is, we've got to make this stable, is it passes on some kind of negative effect to you and to me. The people who are just out here trying to live their lives, they're not trying to gain any kind of power. They just want to be able to pass on money to their kids. They just want to be able to give money to orphanages or churches or their buddy down the road or whatever. <clears throat> or whoever. If you're a Satanist and you want to give money to the church of Satan, <clears throat> this is going to make it harder for you to do this. Okay. And like I said before, in Christianity, <clears throat> sorry. Our concept of money is fluid. I will have money when I need it. And I always do. Um, these things that are going on in the world right now don't affect too many of us Christians. Because one, we have the support of other Christians. And two, God always provides. He provides free food. He provides food whenever we... He provides ways for us to pay for food when maybe we don't have enough food. <clears throat> through the church, through finding money on the ground, through all kinds of things. And he also provides, like, I don't know how many people I know who have gotten raises all of a sudden, who have gotten work all of a sudden. And, and this is not, so this is one of those things where it's like, when it starts to get harder to pay for things, money starts appearing. And that is that fluidity in Christianity with money. Sometimes you have a lot, sometimes you don't, but you always have what you need in some form. So for me, I don't want the government getting involved in that fluid movement of money, which is what they're doing. They're either going to charge the banks, they're either going to charge you to put it in there or charge you to take it out. And right now you don't have that. If they start charging you this negative interest rate, the value of your money goes down. Now, I don't like it, I'm against it, etc. Am I going to worry about it or am I going to just lose my crap over it? No, because like I said, in Christianity, money is fluid. God can give you that 1% back in a different way he, or he can just give it back to you in another way. But ultimately, I think it's a bad idea to be doing this. Our money needs to be fluid. We need to have that $300 billion or whatever out there, like the European Union should have that $300 billion out there because that is what will stimulate their economy. Having the money out there ready to be spent on whatever is what stimulates an economy. It is not the government keeping it, keeping your money in the bank for you or the government telling you, hey, well, now you got to pay us this 1% the whole time if you want to use it. That doesn't stimulate the economy. Loosening their grip on the money and letting us buy what we want, invest what we want, these are the things that stimulate the economy. So if anybody ever tells you that, they're wrong. <laughs> okay. So I love the conclusion here. Unfortunately, eliminating cash will likely do little to reduce crime as there are multiple ways to circumvent the need for cash. And even worse, cutting off cash may just lead criminal organizations to innovate and use prepaid gift cards, digital currency, or bank checks to elude law enforcement. So it's not, it, it really won't do anything to stop or mitigate or do anything like that. This, the money fraud or the financial criminality, it won't do that. All it will really do is affect you and me in these other harmful ways. I've outlined it before, like we are supposed to be able to pass things down, this will make it harder. If we are supposed to be able to give, this will make it harder, things like that. I am not for the government coming in and telling us, you know, charging us to have our money. They are involved, they take our money as soon as we make it, 
through our income tax. They take our money when we buy our food. They take our money when we put gas in the car. They take our money when we die. They take our money when we're born. The, you know, there's taxes involved with all of this. Any th anytime you do anything, you are taxed. And that's enough. I say enough is enough. You don't need to get involved. They want to know everywhere, you know, every time we spend money. Recently, they wanted to do this thing where if you, if you remove $600 from your bank account, then they wanted to know where it was going and why. No, enough is enough. Stop trying to control and wrench us down and wrench us down and wrench us down. Enough. Just enough. Just stop. Guys, one day, just sit around and think about how many times you're taxed. And I think you will understand a little bit more where someone like I am coming from. Because the amount of money that they get from us and the amount of involvement they have with, with trying to direct us on how to spend our money is crazy. And this is just one way, right? If they reduce the value of your cash at the bank... It begins a larger trend of more and more of your money just being worth less, right? So you think to yourself, okay, well, I'll go digital because I get to keep the value. I still have to have, if for example, using my example, if I put in a hundred dollars or if I have a hundred dollars from my check come in, I get to keep that hundred dollars. I get to keep that same value. But if I do things in cash, I start to lose the value of my money overwhelmingly over time. And so that is like a social engineering thing. They'll go, you'll, you will then make the decision yourself to go, okay, well now I have to do it digital to keep the value. You see what I'm saying? They, they are socially engineering this thing and I'm not for that. Again, in Christianity, money is fluid and it should stay that way. There's no reason for them to for them to restrict it or make it only this or only that, etc. So they have a bottom line section. They always have like an end section. It says the war on cash begun with the European Central Bank's proposal to get rid of the 500 euro note and calls for the elimination of the $100 bill in America. While the argument for the move is that these large bills aid in financial crime and terrorism, the ulterior motive may be to make it harder for banks and consumers to avoid negative interest rates by holding on to actual money. So again, a negative interest rate is where they charge you for withdrawing or depositing your money into the bank. So you get your check, you want to withdraw your cash, uh, well, that's 1%. You get paid in cash, you want to deposit it, that's 1%, thus devaluing it, okay? So that's just something to think about, guys. What do you think? I'd love to hear your ideas down in the comments. This is, I don't like this. Um, this is just too much. This is too far. Enough is enough. And that's where I'm at with it. So I'd love to hear your comments down, or I'd love to hear your comments. I'll just say it that way. Um, remember to pray and read your Bible, and I'll see you in the next one, okay? Bye.